and he will support me. And I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, we have his guidance, we have his hand. And the scripture goes on to tell us when there's darkness in our lives, he's the one that can turn that darkness into light. Mm -hmm. Come on, read it. He reads, um, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. So day, morning, or night, you cannot hide from God's sight. He is mm -hmm. the God who is omnipresent. He is in all places yes. at the same time. And he's going to be with you forever. Why don't you get John 14, 16 through 17. John 14, 16 through 17. What does it say about God? being with us. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. All right. He's going to be with you forever mm -hmm. and ever and ever and ever. He's not going to run off and leave you when you're having a hard time, when you're having difficulties, when you're imperfect, when you make a mistake. When you sin, get Psalm 51 for me. I want to read that one. You might have done something foolish like David. And maybe everybody has thumbs down on you. But God's not going to take his Holy Ghost his Holy Spirit. What does it say, Mary? Psalm 51 and 1. Read. It reads, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me, Lord. This is David. <laughs> After he made a mess. He was listening to his flesh. And every time in our lives, when we decide not to obey God, the ever-present God, We're going to shipwreck. But I'm so glad that the other part of that yes. is God doesn't just throw us away. Mm. But he makes a way for a brighter day. I don't care what you've done. There's mercy through the sun. Come on, read it. Have mercy on me, O oh God, because of your unfailing love. Your unfailing love. Your love will never fail. Your love will never abort. But you're still wooing me. You're still calling me. Because of the intimacy that you have with me. We discussed last week, we're God's children. Yes. And when your child messes up, you do the best that you can to comprehend. But God, he's not going to throw us away, but he will discipline us today. Because the Bible says he chastens those whom he loves. Come on, what is, what is there yourself trying to get somewhere with this? Because of your great compassion, blot out the stains of my sin. Thank you for your compassion. Lord, not only do you see me suffer, but you suffer with me. And I've got to be careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Bring suffering and pain and shame. But I'm supposed to glorify his name. Come on. Because of your great compassion, blot out, my, blot out the stains of my sin. Lord, I know you can heal me. I know you can cleanse me. I know you can deliver me. You've got that kind of authority. Come on, read it. Wash me clean from my 
guilt. Purify me from my sin. I need you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me. Mm -hmm. That's what he's there to do. But come on, read it. For I recognize my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. Yes. Against you and you. I don't know how many times I've done something in my conscience. It whips me to death. Come on, read it. For I recognize my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. Yes. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. Yes. What verse is that? That was number four. Number four? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have, let me see. Psalm 51. I believe it's in the uh, Psalm 51. Let me see. I think this is in the, uh, the let me see, the King James Version. And If you look at the 11th verse, the 11th verse is what I was trying to get to regarding mm -hmm. the, the ever presence of God. Yes. It says, cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. God's not gonna take his Holy Spirit away from you. Mm. Because you had a struggle. God came to be with you, not never, but forever. Come on, read John 14 and 16 and 17. What does it say about him being with us forever? It reads, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Forever! So don't listen to the devil and his lies, his tricks. God's not with you anymore. God's not interested in you. God has given you a promise that I'll never leave you or forsake you. Even when you're down in the dumps of life. He's there. And he will be there all the time. So this is the omnipresent God. Yes. Or another term that you may hear is the ubiquitous God. Mm. Being present everywhere at once. And this can only be accomplished through the Holy Spirit. So don't grow weary. Don't fret. God, he is ever present in our lives. And all we need to do is recognize that. And if you can recognize that, then we can capitalize on that. And since we know that, we can acknowledge that. And if we can acknowledge that, then we can project that. And we can say with the prophet Elijah that there are more of them, more of heaven that's with us than the enemy, the devil is with them. Mm. Because I know God is ever present. Yes. So this is the omnipresence of God. This is one of his divine perfections. Omniscience. Omni, which is all. Sense is to know that he has total and complete knowledge of everything. He is infinitely wise.
that there's nothing that God doesn't already know about us and our situation. And there's nothing that we can do or tell him that is going to disappoint him. But he stands with open arms ready to love us and deliver us when we come running back to him. And he's not going to be like some people. When you've messed up and they know about it, they keep bringing it up. Over and over again. But God says, I'll put it out there under my blood in the sea of forgetfulness. I'm not going to rock your face in this every time. So he doesn't use it against us even though he knows about us. Because he knows all things, no one can tell him anything that he doesn't already know. And you can't give him any kind of advice. God, I think you need to do it this way. Lord, you need to do it just like this. This is what I'm praying for. Nevertheless, not my will. Sometimes we think we know best. But we're going to make a complete mess. God knows everything before there was a what, when, or where. God was there. Come on, get Isaiah 40 and 13 through 15. What does the word of the Lord say about the omniscience of God? Come on, read it. It reads, who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who can advise the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit? Come on, read it. Who knows enough to be his teacher or counselor? Who can teach God anything? Nobody. And since he has the answers, then you need to comply with his Holy Ghost, his Holy Spirit. You need to hear it from the Spirit. Don't fear it, draw near it. Come on, read. He reads, who knows enough to be his counselor or teacher? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction? No, 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 no! He don't need your advice. He don't need your instruction. He just needs your obedience. Mm. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come with a dewdrop, so mercy shine bright. Shine all around us, day and night. Jesus, the light of the world. Let this light be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. This is the light of mine. Shine and shine and shine. Let God blow your mind. Come on, read it. Read it. It reads, No, for all the nations of the world are nothing in comparison with him. All the billions of people in the world. He says they're nothing but a drop in a bucket. Yes. God was the take his holy ghost. You better recognize. Mm. Recognize. He knows what's best. Yes. And sometimes when we're grappling with life and we can't make sense of the nonsense, I want you to know that God, He has your best interest in mind. And although sometimes you will not be able to understand everything that God does, some things will be a mystery to you. As the scriptures tell us in the New Testament, we are perplexed. We don't understand what in the world is going on. But we're not in despair. We're not without help. We're not without hope. So we can cope. We can cope. 
we've got to know that God is leading us down the path. Mm. And he knows all things. Yes. And it's through his Holy Spirit we see him giving the counsel to men. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, it talks about the deep things of God. We talked about this in, in previous lessons, but the Holy Spirit, what it does for us, it searches the deep things of God. If you look at deep, deep comes from bathos, like bath. It's not a shower, a bath. Mm -hmm. There's some depth in the water. Mm. Well, the wisdom of God, if it was compared to a bath, it would be bottomless. <laughs> but what the Spirit of God does for us, he goes within himself that has no limitations, who is unfathomable, he goes within his infinite parts and he pulls out a finite part. Mm. And he puts it down in my heart. Mm. So he goes within his infinite self and pulls out something finite. And this is where we unite. So read it for me. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. What does it say, man? But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. The deep things of God. And it brings something out. So sort of like when a, when, a, when a fisherman goes down there with his pole, and, and he's, he's deep sea fishing, mm -hmm. and, and, and after a while sometimes, the line starts tugging and pulling, and he pulls something out. In the same way the Holy Ghost, he pulls out something from God mm. to feed me, to lead me, to guide me, mm. to sustain me. And lastly, the Holy Spirit, it gives us the spiritual weather. You know, like the weather man, or the weather woman, or the weather person. The Holy Spirit he is the weather man in the supernatural. And sometimes God, not all the time, but sometimes he tells us that we need to get ready. Yes. We need to prepare that there's a storm that's coming. He gives us some intuition in other words, I, I don't know exactly what it is. But I, I feel something. This is a, this is a move that I need to, to make, a road that I need to take. Come on, get John 16 and 13. Yes, it reads. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will... When he comes... When he comes, what is he going to do? When he comes, he will guide you into all truths. He will not speak on his own. He He's going to guide you into all truth. He's not going to speak on his own. What does it say? Will only speak what he hears and will tell you what is yet to come. He's going to tell me what is yet to come. Hmm. And this is not ESP. Extra sensory perception. <laughs> this is the Holy Spirit from God. Mm. I don't need a fortune teller. I don't need a 900 number. But the Holy Ghost is going to tell me what I need to know. That's right. Mm. I don't know why I can't get away from this. The Holy Spirit was stabbed. 